sure that y'all are very much concerned about why our Congress is so unresponsive to the regular needs of American citizens. Why some of these policies that come out are so bizarre, so unfair, so skewered against regular Jane and Joe citizens. The reason is simple. Special interest groups run Washington. And I don't mean that metaphorically, I mean literally. That's Representative Mo Brooks, a Republican, admitting during a campaign event that cash rules everything around him in Congress. In fact, this was one of the most candid, detailed, transparent admissions by a lawmaker of something that we not only suspect, but know because we've been covering for such a long time. Now, he gets even more detailed when he talks about how chairmanships work. Remember, there are various committees and really your power and political capital within Congress does rely on the type of leadership roles you're able to receive and maintain. And there's a lot of money involved in that regard as well. So let's listen to what Mo Brooks has to say about that and we'll discuss. In the House of Representatives, I'll use that as an example because that's where I work. If you want to be chairman of a major committee, you have to purchase it. And the purchase price for a major committee, say like Ways and Means, minimum bid is a million dollars. Now I'm, I'm talking literally here, I'm not talking metaphorically, okay? We have committees broken down by A group, B group, and C group. C are the cheapest, B are the most expensive, are middling, A is the most expensive. It's the most expensive because those are the committees that the special interest groups care the most about. So where does a congressman come up with a million dollars to be chairman of one of these A committees? You can't get it from Joe and Jane Citizen because Joe and Jane Citizen back home, they're not going to be contributing that kind of money. You have to get it from the special interest groups. And with the special interest groups, there is a quid pro quo. If you don't do what they tell you to do, they won't give you the money that finances your chairmanship. He used the words quid pro quo. Yeah. He said it openly and I want to give credit to Lauren Windsor and Undercurrent for the wonderful work they do because they're the ones who captured that video and put it out there. So I'm glad that we have it because now it's clear, it's obvious. You have a sitting member of Congress who clearly says, "Oh no, they're not just giving us that money out of the kindness of their own hearts. They're doing it because they expect something in return. Yeah, uh, look, Lauren I think is developing into one of the best reporters in the country. 100%. And so uh, I'll tell you, if it, one of our uh, members, CK Progressive wrote in, hey, don't call them mainstream media anymore, call them corporate media because they ain't nothing mainstream about them. And I hear you on that, but that's what people normally refer to them as. So, but let's take a CK suggestion. The corporate media, this, you know, you name it, CNN, etc. If they had that clip, they wouldn't even play it. Because as he explains later in that, it's over four minutes, it's an incredible explanation. I'm gonna get to Thomas Massey, another Republican that's so important in his explanation. But as he explains in the clip, he's like, all the media know it, but they never report on it. And that's totally true. Mm -hmm. CNN, New York Times, Washington Post, you all know that these guys get bribed. And yet you don't think that's relevant to share in all of your political coverage? So he listed the actual prices. He explained that someone running for a Republican leadership position literally had a brochure with the prices on it. This is how much you must pay. And look at the circular, the vicious circle that it, vicious for us, the, the voters. You have to get money from a special interest group to get the chairmanship. And then in order to keep the chairmanship, you have to make them happy. So they give you more money to keep the chairmanship. And what is what do you get the chairmanship for to pass bills? So what bills are you gonna pass? Anything that helps your voters? No, your first priority is gonna be to the special interest. And you just- And he said it too, it later in the thing, he's like, oh yeah, yeah, you have to deliver for them. And I gotta say this one more thing, Anna. I'm sure I have a lot to say, but Thomas Massey, the other Republican he referred to, explained that these special interests are actually, to be fair, not buying the politicians, they're renting them. 
And if you don't deliver for them, they take the money away, you lose your chairmanship, you lose your power. And that's what I've been telling you guys for 20 years here. No corporate interest gives money out of the goodness of their heart. They do it to maximize profit. And there's not a single business that does something without a return on investment. They're all public corporations, they don't have a choice. So the reason why Mitch McConnell and Nancy Pelosi have raised about a billion dollars a piece is because they give those corporate special interests an excellent return on their investment. That's why they keep renting. Yeah, absolutely. But you know, while I appreciate how candid Mo Brooks was uh, while addressing people who were at his campaign event, uh, you know, he is a member of Congress. And while every member of Congress knows how this system works, and when they're pressed on it, they pretend like they're really, they find it discouraging, they find it terrible, undemocratic, they never do anything about it. So he knows how the process works. He knows how this system is specifically set up in a way that carries out policies for corporate interests as opposed to carrying out the best interests of his constituents. But is he making a big deal about it? I mean, you could tell from the video. I mean, it has to be like carefully recorded. They, you know, they he doesn't know he's being filmed. And it's and I wonder what would his commentary be if he knew that he was being filmed? Cuz clearly he doesn't want to make a big deal about this publicly. He thinks he's at a campaign event among friendly individuals who aren't gonna go out there, right? So when he's talking to people, the Joes and the Janes that he was referring to, in an intimate setting like this, he'll tell them what they wanna hear and he'll tell them what's really going on. But then he'll turn around and be supportive of the same system that he's being critical about in that clip. Now, remember he got endorsed and unendorsed by Donald Trump, right. okay? And so I'm not sure where it is in the timeline that this was recorded. Uh, but understand that it's hard for anyone that supports the Republican Party overall or Donald Trump to make these comments publicly because they are the corruption. Now, not exclusively, D Democrats do it too, definitely. Do not ever listen to corporate media telling you, oh, when Mitch McConnell takes the money, oh, it is nefarious. They don't talk about anyone taking They don't any ever money. talk about that anyway, okay? Yeah. But, but if they did, but if Nancy Pelosi or Joe Biden take it, Oh, it is angelic, and they just—they're. Oh, it's all charity. It's all for the public good. No, you saw they didn't pass a single thing that would help the average American worker when they had clear majorities in the House, the Senate, uh, and the presidency. Oh well, but that's because other Democrats wouldn't go along. Why wouldn't they go along? For this exact reason. You remember Joe Manchin, Christmas Cinema, two Democrats went to go collect checks from the Restaurant Association. After they voted against the $15 minimum wage, what was the special interest most interested in defeating $15 minimum wage? The National Restaurant Association. If the corruption is obvious, it's brazen, it's over the top. The only people who can't see it are the people who work in media. So Mo Brooks is a terrible guy. I don't want anybody to get mistake what we're saying. He's the guy who encouraged January 6th. Remember, he's the one that had the bulletproof vest. He knew how dangerous his own voters and supporters are. And he didn't want to get killed as they might go cause violence against other politicians, right? right. He was riling them up yeah. uh, during the rally that happened right before the riots took place. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, and not only that, I mean, he's an animal of the same machine that he purportedly seems to be against, right? Like. Let's look at the numbers real quick. I just want to share some of his fundraising numbers because I think it's important. He started campaigning for Congress back in 2009. And since then, he has raised a whopping $7.65 million, okay? So where do you think he got that money from? Is it from the Joes and Janes or is it from the same corporate interests that he's speaking out against during this campaign event? And then you should take a look at who his top contributors are. So Club for Growth. Of course, is one of his top contributors. And if you're not familiar with them, their whole mission is to keep taxes low for the rich. You also have Dynetics Inc. and Lockheed Martin, both are military contractors. These are his top contributors. So when you look at the policies that he champions or supports, you have a clear understanding of why. You have a clear understanding of the quid pro quo taking place behind the scenes because he told you himself in the video that we watched. Yeah, so a couple more things. So uh, number one, uh, why is he saying this now? Well, 
it's probably a little bit of desperation. He's in the House, but he's running for the Senate seat in Alabama. And he has slid down in the polls to near non-existent. So, and, and that's part of the reason why Trump and unendorsed him because it looks like he's not gonna win. So in a desperation attempt on the campaign trail, he's telling his avid supporters, "Oh, oh, okay, I'll drain the swamp. I'll finally tell you about the corruption I've been taking part of and all my friends and colleagues have been taking part of for decades because I am so anti-corruption. But hey, I'll take it because that was the most honest thing I've ever seen from a congressperson, no matter what the reason is. By the way, progressives in Congress, you couldn't do that? You know why they didn't do it? Because it would offend their beloved Democratic colleagues who all bought their chairmanship through corruption. Why do you, th we tell you all the time, for example, Richie Neal, head of the House Ways and Means Committee, the one that, that Mo Brooks mentioned, because it's the most powerful committee in the House and controls the money. The guy in charge of that committee is Richie Neal. He is a Democrat who is one of the most corrupt people in all of Congress. He often beats the Republicans in corruption. Why do you think he controls the most powerful committee in the House? Because he's the most corrupt. But if progressives say it, they're like, oh, that is a colleague, that is a colleague. And everybody in Washington will cry and the press will blame them for it, causing division within the Democratic Party by saying the true things. Just say it, say it. That guy right there, Richie Neal, he takes tons of corporate cash and he sells out to him. And here's how he sells out to him. We say it on the show, we can prove it, everybody knows it. So it takes a, a loathsome Republican on the last days of his desperate campaign to finally admit something that they all know. He might be honest there, but it doesn't necessarily translate into action. Again, he's an animal of that same machine. He's been benefiting from it since 2009. Okay, super last thing. Um, he mentioned special interests. Now, what do you think the special interests are? Do you think it's Habitat for Humanity that's giving a million dollars so they could uh, buy the chairmanship? No, every one of those special interests is corporate. They're the ones with all the money. They're the ones who say, hey, I want the head of the defense committee, why? Because I'm a defense contractor, that corrupt son of a bitch is gonna funnel trillions of dollars to me, right? The, the committee that deals with drugs and healthcare, well, who's gonna buy them? People who are giant drug companies, corporations, right? The people that give to the energy committees, who do you think they are? They're the biggest oil companies and the biggest fossil fuel companies. It's corporate special interests, literally, again, to be fair to Thomas Massey, he's a, he's a very good point, not buying our politicians, but renting our politicians. And every time they recontribute to them, they're saying, boy, way to be my servant, dog, go in there and vote for me and not your goddamn voters. And they go, yes, sir, absolutely, sir. Politicians are not the most honorable people as the corporate media tell you. They are the least honorable people in the country. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, so really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.